so good Thursday morning, everybody. I hope you all are doing well. Um, I'm happy to be here along with my colleague, Kyle Boyson, to share some digital tools that can be utilized in the classroom. I'll be going first follow, to share a couple of tools and then Kyle will take over. So my name is Corina Cashard. I am the Director of Educational Technology for the Arizona Department of Education Adult Education Services Unit. The first tool I'll be featuring is Padlet. I'm going to show you all about Padlet. I'll demonstrate three examples of how Padlet can be used as a classroom tool. Then you will get to experience Padlet as a student would. And finally, you will get an overview of how to create your own Padlet. So first of all, what is Padlet? Padlet is a free tool with paid options. With the free version, you can create up to three Padlets. So collaboration, Padlet is an easy way to stay in touch with students with live updates. So for example, during class time, you would be able to see what is being posted as it's happening. It is accessible. So Padlet can be used on a computer, a tablet, a smartphone, or smartphone with the apps available for Apple, Android, and Amazon devices. It supports many different file types, which include website links, image upload, document attachments, and so on, so that that can be added to a post in Padlet. So this offers flexibility in the types of deliverables you require of your students. It's also flexible, so you can make them as simple or as complex as you'd like. You can make them personalized or plain, the Padlets that I will show you all use the same layout, which is a grid or columns, um, but there are many other layout choices to choose from. And last but not least, Padlet is easy and intuitive. I know that um, it, that's subjective, but I do believe that Padlet is indeed easy and intuitive to use for any level of technology experience. Uh, it has a familiar feel. If you have used um, or if you do use Pinterest or social media, you'll notice some, uh, some similarities. So I like to think of uh, Padlet as education's Pinterest. So the first example is um, using Padlet as a discussion board. So this is what Padlet could look like if you were using it as a discussion board. You have your title up top, which in this case is current events, the 2020 census, followed by a prompt for students to reply to. So this here is the prompt. The first boxes at the top of each column are the headings. So the, these, this is where you can customize and enter whatever information you want. So these boxes here are where you can adjust what content goes in them. And you can also adjust the amount of columns. So you could have 10 columns, you can have one column. Um, that's completely customizable. In this case, students were given uh, sentence starters and asked to reply in the appropriate column. Students would hit the circle at the bottom of the column uh, to add their response. So they would read the prompt and then decide which column they wanted to reply to or their, their response went with, and then hit this circle button here to, to enter a reply. So if you notice the prompt asks them to provide a credible source. So this is where being able to insert a link and or attach a document comes in handy. So the goal here was to give students an opportunity to express their concerns regarding the census and you as the teacher could address any misconceptions that they may have had um, regarding the census. So this is just an example of how the discussion board could be used. You could also use Padlet as a resource repository. So now that we are working remotely, staff meetings and other opportunities to collaborate may have gone down. Um, so this is one way you can still come together and share resources with your colleagues. As you can see here, we have several states sharing ideas about an attendance reporting model known as the teacher verification model. This setup could be used to share instructional materials with other teachers at your program or maybe by subject. So if we change these headings, instead of having the states here, if we added um, reading language arts, math, civics, science, or if we had teachers' names, if we had Mrs. Gashord, we had Mr. Boyson, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you could have a one-stop shop for instructional materials that are vetted by your peers. So this is one way that you can still collaborate with your, with your fellow teachers um, as far as sharing res instructional resources or any other information announcements, that sort of thing uh, that you wanted to share and collaborate on. 
The last example of how we can of how to use Padlet is using it as a mini LMS, and I and I mean mini. <laughs> So maybe you have a lot of instructional resources for your students. You just need a way to organize and manage submissions. Enter Padlet. So the title can be, for example, the teacher's name and subject, or just the teacher's name and let each column be a different subject. So for example, here I have the teacher and the subject, and then please find your class, each column, please, please find your class column and attach your assignment when completed. So, I mean, depending on how your program is set up and how you want to set up this mini LMS, you could have your Algebra 1 class, or if you have multiple subjects in one class and it's more by day, so you could have your Monday, Wednesday AM class here. Um, and this is an example of a post that I gave um, for, for an assignment. So it says, please complete the practice problems below and return by Friday. So one thing that I do recommend is color coding your post, your, your post as the teacher, a nice bright color so that when you start getting submissions and the scroll bar gets longer and longer, uh, students can easily identify your posts, whether they're announcements or assignments. So if you consider scrolling down, 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 um, every time they see a bright orange post, they'll know that it's an, it's an assignment or something they need to read from the teacher. So this assignment was to complete a handout with math problems and students can submit them with the reply. So once they reply, they can say, hey, hey I said, hi teacher, here's my assignment. Um, they can up, if they saved it to their computer, they can upload from a computer, uh, their, the file from their computer. This happens to be from a Google Drive. So they could even just enter the link to their Google document as a submission. They could take a picture of their of the handout and uh, upload it there. So they have all these options to upload their assignment. Another example, um, so if you see here, there's the film circle. So if you wanted your ESL students to practice speaking, for example, they could use the film option to record themselves repeating a list of vocabulary words that you might give them. Uh, so there are many ways that you can that you can get a deliverable from your student thanks to this flexibility here of all these options okay so now you're going to get to experience padlet from a student's perspective so i've set up this sample padlet for us to use as a discussion board if you have an iphone you can just use the camera to scan the qr code otherwise you can go to the website uh, read the prompt and add your story to to one or more of the categories i'm sure we have more than one one story. You know, somebody asked if there is a way to make the instructional text on the Padlet larger or more evident. Yes, you can show, you can adjust the, the font. I'll show that um, just after this example. So this is an example of how Padlet could be used as a discussion board. So now I'm going to go over how you can create your own Padlet. So first up, you would go to this website, www.padlet.com, and register for an account. I just use my Google account so that I don't have to remember a new login or password. It, it gives you that option, so I definitely take advantage of that. Then once you log in, you'll see, that you'll see this uh, menu here. You're going to click on the pink circle that says Make a Padlet. And then this is where you get to choose your, your layout. You can choose a wall, um, which is probably what you would see like in Pinterest, uh, Canvas, Stream, which you would see, for example, on social media, like a Twitter feed. Um, don't actually have Twitter, so that might be inaccurate. I apologize. Grid is what I was using for the discussion board and the resource repository and the mini LMS. Uh, there's a shelf, there's back channel, which is like, like a, like you would see in your phone through texts, um, a map and a timeline. So you can choose any of, from any of these. And then you click, there'll be a gear button and you'll get this modify selection. And this is where you can make all your, you can, you can basically customize it. So title, you enter your title, you give the description, you can choose an icon and it basically has all of the emojis that you would have in your text keyboard. So there's a lot to choose from there. And then this address is, is important as well. As you can see by default, it just assigns you a combination of um, numbers and letters. But this is where you can put something um, to make it easier for students to log into. So if you remember um, in the example, 
Mine was slash Q life, quarantine life. So you can make it, you can personalize that so that it's easier for students to get into. You can adjust the wallpaper. You can make the color scheme, whether it's uh, darker or lighter. And then you have these other options as well. So display author name above each post. If you're gonna use it for um, classroom purposes, I would say turn that on that way. And it would require students to log in, so they would have to get an account as well. But you would see who posted what. Um, but again, if you did it like a mini LMS and their, their submission had their name on it, then I guess they wouldn't need to have their name above it, but it's up to you. A new position post, this is like email, do you want the new post first or last, uh, the top or the bottom. Comments, so you can allow uh, classmates to reply to posts. Reactions, this is kind of like uh, social media where you can give them a, a star, a thumbs up, a heart, that sort of thing. You can choose what, what icon they can give. Oops. Um, content filtering, require approval before it gets posted, so you can, you can decide whether you want to approve things before they post. And then a uh, filter pro for profanity um, that replaces bad words with nice emojis, so that's fun. So in a nutshell, that is Padlet. Do we have any questions? Yeah, there are a couple of questions still pending, um, asking if you're using this for ESL classes. Personally, no, I, I am not using this for ESL courses. And the other question was, do students need a Padlet account? Yeah, so if you turned on the attribution where the, the author's name was displayed, students would need an account. Otherwise, you would just give them the link like I gave you here, and they could go in and post. Padlet is available in multiple languages, but I have never tried it, so I don't know how well the translations are. Um, as far as the size of the text, I thought it was here under, but I, I, mistake, I mistook it for color scheme that you can be adjusted. I apologize. I don't see where you can adjust the size of the text. And then could you go over again, um, personalizing the URL and how, how that link is created so that students can receive it? Sure. So here where it says address, um, this yellow underline is where you can personalize. So by default, it gives you palette.com slash your name or your username. And um, this, the last part of the slash is what you can personalize. So if you wanted to put um, like voice and math or, you know, whatever you wanted it to be, this, this is the section that you could customize. And for example, here, the Q life is what I customized the sample one to because the topic was quarantine life. So this first part, padlet.com slash Karina underscore Avila 07 will always stay the same, but this last part, the Q life, is what gets customized. Uh, once a Padlet is created, is it possible to erase it and use it again? Yes, and that is what I do. <laughs> so, um, like I said, with the free version, you can only create three, but you can con you can continuously modify, update, delete columns, add new ones. So it's um, as long as you don't need more than three at a time, you can completely use those three over and over and over again. For the sake of time, if there's nothing else, I'm gonna move on to our next tool, which is Loom. And Loom is a screen capture tool that I like to use because it's free, easy, and intuitive. Our three favorite words when it comes to tech tools. <laughs> so the website is up here, it's useloom.com. And using Loom is as simple as installing a plugin, which the website has a big blue button for. So when you go to this website, you'll see a big blue button that says get started with Loom. And you just click that and it'll install on your browser. And then you select what you like to record. So you see here we have the Loom plugin right here. And I think I have a circle for it. Um, so it's circling the logo of Loom and then you choose whether you want to share your screen with your camera, just your screen, or just your camera. And then you decide whether you want the full desktop, which if you're going to be switching between tabs, um, definitely recommend full desktop. If you're just going to stay on one thing, like you're just doing a lecture for your PowerPoint presentation, you're not going to be leaving the PowerPoint, you can do current tabs either way. And then you just hit start, start recording. 
um, it'll give you a three, two, one countdown so that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, catch you off guard. And then the other tab that you see here um, through the plugin is notifications. So it'll tell you when someone's viewed the video for the first time so that you know, okay, they received it, um, that sort of thing. But it only gives you a notification for the first one, not thereafter. And you can also disable that if you'd like. So when you log into the website, you can organize your videos um, into folders, much like you would in a Google Drive. So here, this is how I organize mine, my ADE folders, um, miscellaneous, miscellaneous questions and tips for success. So I use Loom. I teach uh, online courses for Grand Canyon University. So this is what I use uh, for that. And then obviously ADE, Arizona Department of Education, these are the videos I've created for that. So you can organize them any way you'd like. And two of the main ways that I use Loom is to offer feedback and answer simple how-to questions. So for example, for feedback videos, um, you see here they're, they're relatively short, between two and a half and three and a half minutes. Um, this project, so there's only <laughs> two to four people per group, so hopefully everyone got to see it. It tells you how many people viewed it and then how long ago it was made. Um, so if you think of your, your typical grading time, you review the content, you might write your notes on the side. Sometimes students have questions about it, like what, what did you mean here? Um, sometimes they're unable to read it, that sort of thing. But if you consider giving verbal feedback through Loom, you can give clearer and more in-depth guidance, as well as use your tone of voice to encourage students. So like you could say something like, you know, this needed some improvement, but you really did a great job here. You know, like show your enthusiasm, for what they're doing um, or demonstrate, you know, if it's a speaking thing, if you demonstrate how to pronounce something or how to, if they misspelled it, you can pronounce it for them and then show, you know, this is why, that sort of thing. Um, so ultimately the time it takes to review assignments is the same or less than grading with pen or paper. Um, and the feedback quality is generally greater because you can give more information easier. And then the other thing I like to use it for is how-to videos. So like I mentioned, I teach online courses and I have found that with each course, there's a set of frequently asked questions. So I create a video to post in the discussion forum or announcement somewhere that I know students are gonna go to um, that students can access. So for example, you get questions like, how do, I, how do I access the rubric or how do I get to the grade book? So you just create a short video, how to do it. So when you get that question, you paste that link back to them and you're set. Or maybe you have a colleague um, who sent you an email asking, do you know how to access the Google Drive? Um, and you can do a quick screen capture of the steps and send the link off. It's much faster and easier than trying to reply by typing out the steps. And I mean, some of the videos I've made are as short as 10 seconds. So here um, I had a question from a teacher how, about reading the student data sheet. So I just showed them really quickly how to uh, what, what each column represented, that sort of thing. Um, I did a quick video on how to use the discussion board in Blackboard for one of the courses that we have going. Um, I have an uh, introduction video about myself for my, for my online course. Um, <laughs> 12, 12 views. It's like half the class, so I won't take it personally. <laughs> And then again, how-to video for just demonstrating a tool, GeoGebra. So it's two and a half minutes. I mean, it can be as long or as short as you want them to be or need them to be. And that's Loom. So also consider that we just covered Padlet. So you may wanna have your students create and deliver presentations. So they might have a PowerPoint presentation that, that you had them create, but they're not able to present it in class as they would. So they can record themselves presenting, um, record their audio presenting each slide, and then paste that link into their Padlet um, as their submission. So these tools can kind of work together as well. We have any questions for Loom? There are a few here, um, starting with, is, do you know if there's a limit on recording time with the free account? Oh, um, I believe that there isn't a limit on recording time, but there's like a limit on how many you can do. Wait, 
or am I getting that backwards? So I think that there is a limit on recording time, but that's like 10 minutes, something like that. However, what you can do is, so what we did at Grand Canyon University, this is where I started using it, is if you invite someone, then you get, um, that time is extended. So my colleague invited me, so she got the extended time. Then I invited the next colleague, so I got the extended time. So if you invite each other, instead of all of you registering separately, then that could work. But I've never run into um, an issue where I have been cut off for the amount of videos I have or for, for length. So I'm not sure exactly what the time is. So you see I have 60 videos um, so far. So I haven't been cut off yet. But I do believe that there is a limit for the free account. But it's, it's pretty, it, I mean, it, it's pretty reasonable. I haven't run into an issue with it yet. I hope that answers your question. There are other questions. Can you tell? So it's asking, or they're asking, can you download the videos and post them to YouTube? Which yes, you can. Sorry. And the other you. thing I forgot to mention was as soon as you hit stop um, for recording, the link is posted. It automatically is attached to your clipboard, so you just have to paste it wherever you want it to go. So you don't have to copy the link somewhere. You just um, paste it. Uh, can you use Loom on cell phones? Yes. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pass it off to Kyle Boyson, Arizona's very talented blended and virtual learning specialist. So take it away, Kyle. Thank you, Karina. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. My name is Kyle Boyson. I'm the blended and virtual learning specialist at Adult Education Services Division of the Arizona Department of Education. Today, I wanted to feature a tool for you called PlayPosit. Um, and we're just really quickly going to walk through and walk through setting up a PlayPosit bulb and then uh, understanding how you can utilize PlayPosit to especially supplement distance learning and help with your classroom during this time of, of uh, very specific needs. <laughs> so what is PlayPosit to start? PlayPosit is a platform that allows you to bring in uh, an external link for a video, like a YouTube video or a Vimeo video, and you can take that video and insert interactions throughout the video that will stop the student's viewing and ask them a question that you, you designate. So in this example right here, you can see that there is a clip from a video on heredity from the Crash Course series. That's the link that I chose, and I've ordered the video to stop here for students that are viewing it and pose them a question about how um, genetic traits are passed down from parents to children. You can see it's a fill in the blank question. Uh, there are a bunch of different interactions which I will go into right now. So once you pull in your link from whichever video you choose, you can add discussion questions as you can see on the left here. Those discussion questions allow students to respond to a prompt that's given by the teacher and then reply to one another. And all of those interactions are saved for that particular assignment. So students can kind of build on their understanding. Um, in addition to that, there are free response questions, which require teachers to review uh, responses afterwards. There are, where, there are multiple choice and check questions as well that will grade themselves and provide instant feedback to students, as well as fill in the blank and other options as well. So for this section right here, you can go along with me and try this out. This is a, a link to a preview of a bulb, which is the term that PlayPosit used to, uses to describe uh, a video that has interactions included inside of it. If you did follow the link, then it will look a little bit like what I have on my screen right here. I'm going to click begin. This is a, this is a preview. And so this video, I'm going to pause it really quick to explain. This video will not save the responses because we're just previewing it right now. Uh, you need to assign it to students to be able to actually save responses. I'm going to press play and I'll maybe talk over the video to explain what's going on. has observed the earth getting warmer and the sea level getting higher. What's the connection? Just like mercury in a thermometer, water expands when it's heated. And Earth's ocean is taking in more than 90% of the heat from global warming. That's a lot. Water temperatures also cause a lot of the ice to melt, and it ends up in the ocean. 
Okay. So you can see, and usually there's a, on the little navigating bar on the bottom, there's indicators of where these are going to pop up, but mine didn't show up this time. But you can see that I've included an interaction in this video. And this is at a particular point in time where I felt as a teacher, it would be good to check for understanding at the beginning of the video. You can see on the left-hand side, this little sidebar has popped out with the question. And these are checkbox answers. So I've checked the two responses that I know to be correct, and I'll click Submit. And what you can see right here is that it's given instant feedback to indicate that the student answered correctly. There's a point total that you can, you can adjust uh, or you can remove if you, if you so choose. I'm going to click continue and it will take me on to the next bulb, which I'm going to have to find. I don't want to make you sit through the whole video right now if you don't want to. Next now you can see the little sponsor. bulbs that have been included on the very bottom. And this is the second question which will have another fill in the blank answer. It asks me to fill in how many feet the sea levels will, rely, will rise in, in a child's lifetime that was born recently. Um, the answer, I believe, is three. I'm going to put four just so you can see. Oh, well, I got it correct. So you can see right here that for fill in the blank, it, it allows you to put in the anticipated responses for students. Uh, I put four spelled out and then four the digit. If it were to be answered incorrectly, you would see that there'd be no points awarded and it would immediately tell the students that that was the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And as the ocean rises- And I'm gonna jump ahead to the next bulb. You can see down on this bar that there's these white bubbles that have appeared. That's where I've included interactions. Earth is the only planet we've got. And you can see right here that the video is requesting a long form answer. So this type of answer, if you, I'm just going to type the word answer and click submit, you'll see that this is an asterisk, asterisk out of three points, which will uh, prompt the teacher later to review the answer and give feedback. But moving forward. Um, this is a discussion board post. It has to do with politics, so I'm not going to go too far into it right now. I'm going to just type the word reply here and reply with a generic comment. You can see that that comment is posted right here. All students that subsequently view this video will then see that same comment and have the option of posting their own original reply back down here where I post where I typed before or clicking reply underneath another student's comment and commenting on what they've included. So you can facilitate a discussion this way. And that's pretty much it for this example video uh, because I want to take some time to show you what things look like from the perspective of a teacher. But first, I think it's probably okay to take some questions right now if, if there are any. Uh, where did the questions come from and did you create them? These are questions that I created. So I've created a, um, a handful of different videos just as kind of an example. Um, but these are fully customizable. There is the option, I'm glad you brought it up, there is a, a repository that's available of all of the public lessons that teachers have created. So you can go through and find content that other teachers have assembled and use that to, to make the process a little bit quicker. Okay, um, the next question says, do the students have to answer before continuing with the, with the viewing activity? Or can they skip answering the questions? So the way that functions is customizable by the teacher. So you can go ahead and you can choose how you want the video to be uh, consumed, I suppose. So once you get to an interaction, you can say, can, does a student have to answer the question right now? Can the student quick skip the question? Can the student go back? Those are all options that you can enable or disable depending on what you're going to be using the video for. So there's a, a lot of customization in there as well. Okay, next question. Will spacing matter when answers are entered? I.e. if you hit the space key before entering four, would that have affected anything? Yeah, I believe so. I, I haven't tested it extensively, but from what I understand based on the way that it interprets answers, you wanna be very careful about the, the way um, students, be very careful in, in informing students that they need to answer the, in the cleanest way possible, I suppose, the most direct, because those fill in the blank ones are going to, you're going to allow, be able to put in as many answers as you want to anticipate, but it's not going to be able to account for 
errant special characters and spaces and things like that. So you want to be careful. Awesome. Um, can the students click on the videos at any time or do students and teacher need to be online at the same time? So this video that we just watched that, that I just went through is a preview and is actually accessible at any time and is a great option if you want to just add annotations to a video and have students view it and kind of be guided through the process. Uh, but once again, it doesn't record answers. If, if you want it to record answers, then this teacher needs to assign it to the students that they've put in their class on PlayPosit, which is something I'm actually not going to go into how to do today, but those resources are available on the PlayPosit website. Okay, and last one, can the created videos be inserted into another platform like Canvas? So the integration for PlayPosit is it's definitely integrated into Google Classroom. I'm not 100% on the Canvas piece. I have to um, verify that. I, in fact, we're going to look at, briefly at a Q&A, uh, sorry, an FAQ that's included on PlayPosit's website later, and it probably addresses it there. Uh, but the only one I can confirm is Google Classroom right now. Awesome, and that's it for questions. Okay, so I'm going to jump back over to the presentation for just a couple of brief slides. Um, getting started with PlayPosit is pretty simple. Don't go do this right now. Uh, it'd probably be better to follow along, but all you're going to need to do is go to playposit.com. You're going to log in, and you can see in the first the first slide right here, the login piece is just at the top right. After that, I would highly recommend logging in with an account that's uh, linking your Google account, linking your Office 365 account, or something that will help you remember the password because it's just one more platform. After that, you'll be uh, taken to a dashboard where you, all of your videos that you've created, your bulbs is the word that they use, all the bulbs you've created are displayed, as you can see in this third slide. And then there's a button, a blue button that says add new bulb. All you have to do is click that and it will take you to what I believe is called the director. And that's where you're going to input the URL for the video that you've chosen. So rather than inundate you with more slides, I'm going to take you through that process. So you can see my screen right here. I have navigated to the dashboard where I can see all of the videos that I've created. You can see actually right here at the top is the video that we just viewed a preview of. I'm going to go ahead and add a new bulb to show you the process that a teacher has to go through to create a bulb. And I'm going to enter, it's not the director, it is the designer. So once I'm in the designer, this is where I can input a URL. I'm gonna click this input URL that has a link icon next to it and it will ask me to input the URL. I'm gonna click over to another tab right now where I have a video about learning basic greetings in English. And then I'll jump back over to where I was. I've copied that URL and I will paste it in this section. Once it's pasted in, uh, if it's a video that's from YouTube, then PlayPosit will automatically find a preview of it and show you what you're getting into so that you can verify that this is this is indeed the video that you want to start to add interactions to and edit. It will also offer the default title. You can change that as needed. If you have naming conventions for your classes, that's all well and good. I'm going to leave it for now as, as the defaults to, which is learn English in 30 minutes, which seems like a, a tall order. So I'll click done right here to verify. Yes, that's the video I want to work with. And it's going to take me to the place where I can start to add interactions. I do want to let you know right now that if you want to add a second video, you can do that. Or um, you can add a third and a fourth and you can intersplice videos at your will, which is a little bit more advanced and not something that I'm going to go into for the sake of time, but it is pretty useful if you want to be very, very focused on the content on a certain piece of content that one video doesn't cover completely. Um, I want to direct you first we're gonna play the video and I want you to listen to the first about 10 seconds of it. Speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. So the first 10 seconds of the video are essentially an advertisement. And because I'm 
I'm teaching language learners, I don't really want to add any other distractions. And so one of the features that this, um, this designer has is if you click up here in the top left, it's kind of hard to see, there's an icon of scissors. You can trim the videos down, which is super helpful for focusing on specific portions of videos that may be longer than you'd like. So I grabbed this green handle and I can move it all the way up and down. I'm gonna move it to 10 seconds just to clip out that advertisement. And I'm going to shrink this down to three minutes. So we have a two minute and 50 second video when we're all is said and done. And I'm going to click done. So now you can see that this video, if I scrub back to the beginning and press play. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com. That's going to start from the point that I've indicated. I'm going to play the first 20 seconds after this so that you can get an idea of what this video looks like. And then I'm going to start to insert some interactions. English in three minutes. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hi, how's it going? I'm Alicia. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn new, more common ways to ask and answer the question, how are you, in English. So, my teacher senses are tingling and that means it's time to insert an interaction to make sure that students are following along. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a free response, which you can see right here, now that I've chosen to add an interaction, I can add multiple choice, fill in the blank, poll, check boxes, discussion. Uh, you can also add embedded images and you can add annotations, which are super helpful if you're doing something that's more of like a guided uh, walkthrough of a video. These templates I'm not gonna go into right now, but are helpful if you're doing a, the video series that has similar videos and you want to apply interactions at certain points. So I'm, for this first interaction, just going to click free response. And you'll see right here that it's going to have me enter, enter my question. I'm going to enter the question, what will you learn from this video? I have these already pre-scripted here. And then when students get to the 37 second mark, as you, you can see right here in the blue text at the top of this interaction, then it will ask them, what will you learn from this video? And they'll be able to provide a response in, in, uh, in long answer form so they can write a paragraph if they so choose. Remember, those are going to need to be reviewed by the teacher afterwards. So they're a little bit more time consuming, but can offer you a little bit more insight as well. So I'm going to click play and I'm going to continue on. You've probably learned, how are you? And I'm fine in textbooks before. So she's gonna go over a couple examples of, of how people ask or how people greet each other in English. And I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. She goes over some, some questions that you might hear and some respo potential responses. Not bad. Let's look at our question again. How are you? This is the most well-known way of asking how someone is. You could so I'm going to add an interaction right here to ask what the examples that she went over were. Um, and I'm going to make it a checkbox. I'm going to say, well, it's less of a question and more of a command here. Check all of these sentences that are common responses to how are you? And so we've got good. She went over not bad, not great. I'm gonna add it right here, another answer option. Not great, and then also over there, which is kind of the, the obvious choice to not check. So as a teacher, once you, click the, once you insert these checkbox options, you need to check the correct answers so that the students will, under, will receive that immediate feedback and it will be auto-graded. So I'm going to go ahead and press done. It's going to include that second interaction at 1.30. And that's essentially how that process will go. You'll go through the video, stop it at certain points that you think are essential, and add an interaction to check for understanding or create a discussion. You can see right here that these interactions have been 
included on this this uh, designer section so that I can see which order they go in and I can also edit them and I can see the timestamp as well. I'm going to fast forward really quickly to the very end of the video and I'm going to include one interaction that I haven't mentioned too much so far, which is the poll. You can go ahead and poll students at the very end. And I'm going to ask them, which response do you prefer when someone asks, how are you? Uh, I'm just going to type a couple of options right here. I'm fine and great, just to gather some information for students and to allow them to kind of have a little bit of agency express themselves in the class. So I'm click done. Once that's done and I feel good about the bulb that I've created, which once again, is just the term for a video with interactions in it. I click on review. I can type a learning objective in here. I'm not going to do it right now. Um, you can tag the video so it's searchable by the public. The, there was a question about playback options earlier that I want to address. If you drop this menu down, you can allow learners to rewind after an interaction appears so they can go back and find the answer or rewatch a video if they miss something. Um, you can allow learners to skip interactions if you so choose. You can allow learners to jump through the video and fast forward if you choose, and you can allow them to retake it. So you have a bunch of options of how you want to deploy this, uh, how high stakes you want to make it if you're going to make it strict and stop them and not let them rewind. So those are all options that are in your control. I'm going to save my changes right here, save and exit. It's going to take me back to my dashboard. You'll see here at the top, the video that we just created, or the bulb, excuse me, uh, over on the action side, I can then assign it to my class. And I'll do that really quick, but I'm not going to go through how to create a class. So this is kind of hedging into the territory that's, that's not been explicitly ex explained. But uh, if you have questions, not only are there resources on the site, but there are also, we gotta take a second to answer some questions at the end of this. So unassigned select a date it says for my class that's called Pima training. This is just for a training that I was doing before. I'm going to select the due date of the 14th. So one week from today, looks like midnight is the due date. And then once it's assigned, students will have that accessible as an activity inside of the platform. I can also get the assignment link from here. I can copy that link and I can share it with students in my class or on an LMS if, if I'm doing an announcement on, for example. So even if there is an explicit integration, you can, you can address that piece by, by copying those lesson IDs over and then students that have access to them will be, able to, uh, will be able to access that concept pretty easily. That is the quick introduction to a tool that, that really addresses a lot of needs in a, in a time of distance learning. So I guess it's a good, a good idea to take some questions now, if there are any. Yeah, so the first one is, do students need accounts to play, um, play posit videos or to view play posit videos? So the viewing of videos, just like we did with the previews, if you're not going to record responses, you don't need an account for. So that was the example we looked at earlier. If you are going to record responses, they will need to sign up for an account. So if they have a Google account, I would recommend logging in that way. Um, but they can just supply their email as well. Okay. And the other question is, is there an option to slow the speed of the video? That is a great question. And I don't know off the top of my head. So I'm going to jump over to the preview really quick and see if... Yes. So um, you can still see my screen, I assume. It yep. looks like in the bottom right when you are in the preview video or the lesson, you can slow the speed down just like in YouTube to quarter speed, half speed, and then you can speed it up if you're, I don't know, trying to torture your students, I guess. It says, can you embed play posit videos in a blog or Canvas course? Okay, so I just mentioned going at over uh, or including that link and let's see. Uh, where is I'm looking at an FAQ document that's pulled for, straight from their site here. Um, organizations upgrade to institutional licenses because they want to integrate with LMSs. So it, it looks like the integration with other LMSs is maybe a pro feature. 
Um, the, all the, the pre presentation so far has been done on only tools that are accessible for free by teachers. So there is a limitation on how many learners can view these bulbs, which is capped at 100 unique attempts per month. And so the example they give, give is if you have 25 students, you can do four bulbs per month. Um, so this would be a supplemental material uh, in the free version, but if you do want to do a guided video with the preview like we did initially, those options would be available for uh, without any real limits that I've found. So we wanted to say thank you very much for taking time out of your, what I assume to be crazy busy schedules and joining us to look at some tools to aid in, in your efforts to, to continue to facilitate distance learning with your students. Um, we have an email address that will reach all of the EdSec team if you have questions or uh, looking for recommendations. At, you can reach us at aesedtech at azed.gov. And then we are starting actually to do weekly uh, webinars on these tools and we're kind of building up a repository of tools and guidance on how to use them. And you can access that that part of our YouTube channel at the bit.ly link below, which we'll also include in chat here. Thank you for this information. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen anybody do the play post it. Um, so that'll be fun to play with. And I've got some new ideas on the Padlet and the Loom. So thank you. Thank you for presenting. Uh, remember everybody that the handout will be posted as soon as Karina gets it to me. <laughs> It'll be posted on the OTAN website and all the links that were contained within the, the, the handout will be there on the OTAN site as well.